the YouTube algorithm is not against you. I promise. When you're just starting out with your YouTube channel for the first time, the YouTube algorithm does not know you. You probably don't even know you. You probably don't know the type of videos that you want to be making. And even if you do know the type of videos you want to be making, we need to find a way to get that picked up into the YouTube algorithm and pushed out to viewers. So what YouTube does is they try to find a suitable match for you. Think of it like online dating and think of yourself as a viewer on YouTube. YouTube tailors videos to a selection curated for you. They curate their selection for you based on videos that they think you would be interested in. What's recommended for you might not be recommended for your friends or on the flip side, what might be recommended to your friends or a similar group of people to that might exactly be recommended to you. And so YouTube needs to find a way to curate videos to viewers to get their attention locked in and so they stay watching on YouTube for a very long time. Don't forget YouTube is a business and they still need to make money as well. Well, how does YouTube do this? They go through a history of previous videos that you've watched. What are your interests? What do you commonly search for on YouTube? What entertains you? Are you learning from YouTube or are you on YouTube for entertainment? Now think about yourself as the YouTube content creator. Are your videos for entertainment or are they for educational purposes or are they a mix of both? But how does YouTube know any of this about you as a content creator? They don't, especially if you're just starting out. When you upload your first video, YouTube has no idea who you are. They have no idea of the type of videos that you're going to create. And so how are they going to recommend your videos to people when they don't know who to recommend it to? Now think of this again as the YouTube matchmaking experience. YouTube needs to find a creator and find a viewer where similar content matches up and where the viewer will keep watching the content and the creator can keep creating content that the viewer is going to want to watch. That was a mouthful. So what does YouTube do? You upload your first video, YouTube pumps out your video to a bunch of different viewers and they see what people are interested in and see if people click in and out. And depending on the type of person that's clicking on your video, they might continue to recommend your video to similar types of viewers from there. Now these people may or may not click into your video, but let's say they do. Well, now you have a viewer but is this viewer right for you and the type of content that you're creating? And on the flip side, maybe they clicked into your video and realized after a minute or two of watching that they're just not interested in your video. Now this could be for a number of reasons. And I actually just created a video on why you're not getting the views you wanna see on YouTube and I'll link it right here. Okay, so now they left the video. Well, they weren't a match. They were not your soulmate for YouTube. So on to the next one. Now say the YouTube matchmaking world is working perfectly in your favor. You've uploaded a video, YouTube has recommended your video, someone has now clicked onto that video and they've now watched majority of your video and YouTube now has an idea of one person or a type of demographic that they're more likely to suggest your videos and pump them out into. And this whole cycle will just keep repeating until YouTube consistently finds the same perfect matches for you and your viewers. Okay, so how else is YouTube getting your videos suggested to other viewers? Well, what YouTube is going to do when you upload a video is that they're going to listen to your video. Yes, they're listening to your video. So little robots in YouTube are going to go into your video. They're going to listen to what you're saying. They're going to put little closed captions in. And then through doing that, they're able to see or hear rather the type of content that you're creating and therefore be able to suggest it to other viewers and a larger audience. If you're uploading a bunch of random videos that don't relate to each other, that have nothing to do with each other, it's kind of hard for YouTube to do their little matchmaking thing. They can't pinpoint an audience to suggest to watch your videos. And because of this, you're kind of posting videos all over the place and therefore your audience is gonna kind of be all over the place. Now this could be a good thing or a bad thing. Worst case scenario, you're gonna upload a bunch of random videos. YouTube's not gonna know what the heck you're talking about. They're not gonna be able to suggest your videos and you won't get views. Best case scenario is that you're gonna upload a bunch of random content and hopefully through doing all of this, you're going to find a passion in some type of content that you're uploading. Because again, we don't want to upload content that we're not passionate about because that's very clear to tell on YouTube. And when you do upload all this content, even if it's random, best case scenario, you're going to find a bunch of different viewers that like a bunch of different things. Now this can get a little trickier as your audience grows because you might have your audience coming to your videos for certain types of videos. And if you're posting only one particular type of video, you might lose one audience and the cycle kind of continues there. The key here 
here though is to continue uploading videos first with consistency and then second if you have a video that performed well continue to upload videos around those same lines don't do it if it's something again that you're not passionate about i'm preaching that don't post things that you don't care about you're not interested in because your audience will in turn not care and not be interested number three is that you need to help out the youtube algorithm and you do this through tags and your video descriptions now youtube has come out directly and said that tags don't really play an important part in getting views on your video it's more for helping people with search terms and finding things related to your video but it's definitely something that's included into the algorithm and kind of every little piece matters especially if you're just starting out use tags to tell the algorithm what your video is about and make them make sense for example if your youtube is based around cooking you're not going to put things in your tags around finance you're not going to tag say someone like graham stefan or millennial money something like that because it wouldn't make sense to your cooking channel I mean, unless you were talking about budgeting and cooking, but that's a whole other separate thing. If you're cooking, you might wanna tag something about the dish that you're creating. Say you made pasta, you can tag pasta, the type of pasta, was it spicy pasta? Where in the world was this pasta originated from? Something along those lines, right? The other thing too, is that if your tags aren't related to your video and they don't make sense to your video, YouTube might suggest them to the wrong people. And those same people that are not interested in maybe those types of videos that you're posting are just gonna overlook them, not even click into them and YouTube is gonna see that as, hey, people are not really interested in this person's videos. We're just gonna stop recommending them or recommend them less or maybe not to that demographic. Right there, you've wiped out a group of viewers just from using the wrong type of tags. And YouTube might think that you're not pumping out good videos, which might not necessarily be the case. So make them make sense. Video descriptions. You want an informative video description saying what your video is about. What are you talking about in your video? It doesn't need to be a long lengthy thing. It could be something small. For example, again, with the cooking video in the description, you might wanna write about the dish that you're cooking. What are the different components to the dish? How long does it take to cook? Do you need the, certain ingredients? Is there a certain tool that you're using to create this dish? I don't know, like a special hand blender or something. Why this video might be good for a certain type of viewer, but you might wanna cater to the keto diet audience and you'll put that in your description. Number four. ICTR. Now what's this? ICTR. This is how many people are getting an impression of your video and actually clicking through to your video. So if your video was suggested to a hundred people and only 17 people clicked into your video, that means your ICTR is 17%. 17% of people got an impression of your video and clicked into it. Obviously, the higher that the number is, the better that you're performing, but this doesn't mean that if you're starting low that it's not ever gonna build up or that your videos are no good at all. Like, you gotta start somewhere. The ICTR is something that can also vary very greatly depending on the type of videos that you're watching. Think of your own favorite YouTuber. Do you watch every single video that they post and upload? Not always. Then you have another set of YouTubers who are maybe just below that very favorite and you don't necessarily watch everything that they're posting. Well, your viewers are gonna be the exact same. You might have some people that are gonna watch 100% of your content and you might have some people that are only clicking onto certain content that you upload. And so your ICTR is going to vary per video. But of course, as we talked about before, the biggest factor in determining your ICTR and the higher rate is your thumbnail and video title. Now your title, this ties into a good thumbnail. Good thumbnail good title, good video, good ICTR rating, and therefore overall increasing your odds of getting noticed on YouTube. So the watch duration. So we've talked about how YouTube finds your audience through their little matchmaking thing based on the types of videos that you're posting and the types of videos that your audience wants to see. Then we talked about how the YouTube algorithm needs good tags and descriptions. Then we talked about the ICTR and how many people are viewing the thumbnail and looking at the title of your video and actually clicking into your video. So what happens when you pass all of that? Surely there can't be more to this algorithm. Oh, but there is there is. The algorithm wants to know how long people are staying tuned into your video, how long people are entertained watching your video. And you can very clearly see this type of analytic in your YouTube studio. You can just go into each individual video and you can click in and see where your audience drops off and loses retention in your video. Your watch duration is also super important when you're trying to reach your 4,000 watch hours. You can post a 20 minute video, but if people are clicking out at about minute three, well, your watch duration is going to be shorter and therefore the amount of views that you're getting is going to decrease and the amount of hours when you're trying to reach that 4,000 watch hour threshold is also going to decrease. It's gonna take a lot longer to get to that threshold. And when YouTube sees the same amount of people dropping off on your video around the same time, they're going to be less likely to recommend your video to future viewers because everyone seems to be dropping off your video around the same time. Number five, stick to an identifiable video format. You can create videos that are vlog style. These are gonna be videos that are a snapshot of your life for about 10 to 20 minutes. There's gonna be a mix of different clips. You're basically 
basically going to be walking people through a day in your life or a week in the life, whatever you choose. And you can find an audience that way. There are list type videos. That's actually what this video is. People are clicking into your video. They know that they're going to learn something. And at every point in your video, we're learning something new. So for example, this video right now, we're on point five out of seven. There are tutorial style videos or how to videos. And these are videos where you're going to see the final outcome of the video right at the beginning of the video. People are going to stay interested. They're going to be intrigued because they can see what the final outcome will be. And they'll want to know how to get to that outcome through watching your video. There are also review style videos or first impressions or unboxing or commentary type channels where you're basically getting the reaction of the creator based on whichever product or video or whatever it is that they're trying out for the first time in front of you. You could again further subcategorize these types of videos into a pros and cons. Number six, it's super important to engage with your audience. Ask your viewers questions throughout your video. Be genuine. Don't just throw questions into your video and ask people to comment below just for the sake of having comments on your video. People know when you're doing that, it's not gonna work for you, just don't even bother. But maybe you want someone's opinion on something. Maybe you're open to taking advice from people in your comments. So make sure you're very clear about that when you're saying that in your video for people to comment below. But if your audience is engaged with you, they might get bored and just click off your video. And the final point is comments. So number seven, we were just talking about comments and engagement. So you wanna engage in other people's videos. Now don't be one of those annoying people who go on to popular YouTubers comments and go and spam their comments with your videos and reasons why people should click into your videos or something annoying like that. We've all seen comments like that. It's annoying for everybody and it's not helping anyone. It's definitely not helping you. But what you can do though is go to another YouTuber's page and if you genuinely feel like you have something to contribute to their video, then go ahead and make your comment. If you happen to have a video related to the same topic, you can say, hey, I liked your video because such and such reason. I responded to this in your video based on what you were talking about in your own. I also have a video like this, check out mine. But again, I'd err on the side of caution with that. Tread carefully. You don't wanna be invading other people's spaces with your own comments asking people to come and check out your own videos it's not nice the other thing too with comments is that if you commented something nice that the creator actually likes and they've pinned it to the top of their comment section you have already given yourself an entry portal into people clicking on to your name or your channel some people are just nosy I am anyways and I like to click to see what people are about so who knows they might click into your YouTube channel and you might have a new viewer from there okay so that's all for this video guys I just want to recap very quickly what we went through for one one, how YouTube finds a suitable match for you. Think matchmaker again. Two is the frequency that you're uploading your videos. Remember quality, not quantity. Number three is help the YouTube algorithm out by tags and video descriptions. Number four is your ICTR. Number five is ensuring that you have identifiable video formats. Number six is engage with your audience and that also transfers into number seven, which is your comments. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something new. Let me know if you're starting a YouTube channel of your own. You can comment uh, in my video. I promise I won't consider that a spam. I will take all the comments uh, for anyone starting a new YouTube channel. I'll click in and see what you're about. If you happen to stumble across this video and you found it helpful, share the wealth. Share my video. Let other people know. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. Make sure to stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.